Round two of the Calder Cup playoffs begin tonight for the Calgary Wranglers, and this series will reveal a lot about the Flames' future. Not only are there a bunch of individuals on this team that need to leave a good impression as we head into an offseason and training camp where they can crack the lineup for the Calgary Flames next season, the Wranglers as an organization also need to prove a lot in this specific series in order for them to have a very bountiful future welcome to flames digest i'm mark griffith if you're new around here and you love the flames make sure you subscribe because only about 20 percent of the people watching are subscribed so if you want to stay up to date on all the latest news updates reports and rumors revolving around the calgary flames then make sure you join the fastest growing community of flames fans on the internet we would love to welcome you to the flames digest family it's more like the wranglers digest family at this point but let's get into the big thing here Wranglers round two begins tonight. It should be super, super fun. We have playoff hockey at the Dome this year. No, it won't be for the Flames. It is, of course, for the Wranglers. Their first series, the first kind of mini series, I guess you could call it, because if the Wranglers are to go all the way to the ship, there's five rounds. The first one, they didn't play a single home game. They played in Tucson, as we know. Could be the final games in Tucson as well, with all the uncertainty in the Arizona, now Utah um, organization. But... The round two begins tonight, and the Calgary Wranglers have it in tough against the Coachella Valley Firebirds. They are an affiliate of the Seattle Kraken, and they were really good this regular season. So game one, as you can see, goes tonight, May 3rd, 2024. It's already May, and it's still snowing in Calgary. The weather's a little better today. But the first couple games, as you can see this weekend, both in Calgary, the the uh, Wranglers are doing some big promotions. I always almost say Flames. I'm just so used to it. This is Flames Digest after all. Um, and then they do head out to Coachella Valley. Um, this best of five series should be very good. Hopefully they won't even need those couple last games out there in California. But we will, of course, see. Um, it should be a very, very fun one. And like I said, Coachella Valley, they were really good this season. They actually finished top of the Pacific Division. So let's take a look at the standings here. As we see down there in seventh, were the Calgary Wranglers. They were the ones who just kind of snuck in. Well, it wasn't really snuck in. They were way ahead of the Henderson Silver Knights, uh, the Vegas affiliate. But the Wranglers, they did, out of the teams um, in the Pacific that made the playoffs, they did finish bottom. Um, so they have it in tough against Coachella Valley, who got a bye um, for the first round of the playoffs. And they were really good. They were the best team by far. Only 15 losses in regulation this year. Really, really good from them. And they have some quite familiar faces for a lot of hockey fans. As we know, Shane Wright infamously wasn't drafted by the Montreal Canadiens. He slipped to fourth and went to Seattle. Still hasn't really broken in to the Kraken lineup too much, but he has played for the Firebirds quite a lot this season. Um, there's a, one familiar face. Another very familiar face is the head coach of the Firebirds is Dan Bilesma. Um, so many people will, will remember him from his days as the head coach of the Pittsburgh Penguins, Stanley Cup champion Dan Bilesma. I mean, it wasn't too tough to be the head coach of a prime Sidney Crosby and a prime of Evgeny Malkin and a prime Marc-Andre Fleury and a prime Chris Letang. But either way, still a very, very good coach. And as you can see, the record does pay off there. And net, they've got some former NHL players that we've seen, you know, Joey Decord, Chris Drieger. Um, they have some good, good guys out there. Uh, I think Kale Fleury is down there as well. Um, they have some really, really good guys, and it should be interesting to say the least. Now, why is this series itself, this one individually, so vital for the Flames' future? Well, it's because the Wranglers have played the Firebirds in the past in the playoffs. They played last year in the playoffs, and they got knocked out by the Firebirds. Let's take a look at the bracket here. So as you can see, it was the Pacific Division Finals. It was the number one seed against the number two, and Coachella Valley actually ended up getting the better of the Wranglers. So these individual Wranglers need to prove that they can, you know, overcome some playoff pass, I suppose, getting over the big dogs, being underdogs this year, especially need to prove that. And if they can win this, then they come into the NHL with the mindset that they can overcome anyone and really beat the best to be the best. Um, last year was a bit of an interesting one where Calgary obviously was the number one seed and it was a really, really close series. You know, Dustin Wolf was very inconsistent in it. The first game, he got pulled. Uh, he got a shutout later in the series. The Wranglers dropped a triple overtime game. And then, of course, the decisive game five. Um, if memory serves, I believe it was a 6-5 overtime loss for the Wranglers. Um, 
and that was a bit of an unfortunate one. Obviously, Dustin Wolf giving up six goals in that one isn't ideal. And the Firebirds went on all the way to the Calder Cup Finals where they lost to, was it Hershey? I think it was Hershey. I should have really fact-checked before doing this video. I believe Hershey knocked off uh, Coachella Valley in the final last year. But either way, this is a vital for these Wranglers, especially the ones that will be Flames, to prove that they really can you know, beat anyone, bring that to the NHL level, and then kind of bring an underdog mindset to the Calgary Flames organization because we know they're not going to be favored in a lot of games next year to show that they really can beat anyone, compete with anyone, especially when it matters most in the playoffs. Now, speaking of some of those individuals, let's get into that. Uh, on an individual level, it's also will reveal a lot about the Flames' future. We know there are players who came up to the Flames organization this season that are down playing in these Calder Cup playoffs. Jacob Pelche, Matthew Coronado, Adam Klapka, just to name a few of the forwards. And of course, Dustin Wolf is the big one. Now, so far in these playoffs and in his AHL playoff career, Dustin Wolf has been insane. This is this year so far. He's 2-0 with a 150 goals against average and a 966 save percentage. That is insane. Of course, he got the shutout in that game one. He has been absolutely tremendous in these playoffs, really proving... I mean, how much more can he prove, but really proving just how special and talented and just winning of a goalie he is. He has done everything possible at the AHL level other than win the Calder Cup. He's really proving that this year can be his year and really will reveal a lot about his future with the Flames. If he goes out on an absolute run here, continues above Let's even just say a 930 save percentage throughout these playoffs and leads the Wranglers to a deep playoff run. He will be for sure in the running for the number one spot in the Calgary Flames organization come training camp, especially if Jacob Markstrom is traded away in the off season. Dustin Wolf, he's proven a lot. He can prove even more how good he is, and that will be huge for the Calgary Flames and their future if he can show that he can win the big games as well. It would be so nice to see that. Now, another name we want to focus on here is Matthew Coronado. He w had a very nice interview recently talking about these playoffs. It's kind of his first taste of playoff hockey at the professional level. And here's a quote. It's awesome to start at home here. Excited to be back at the Dome. It's a great team we're playing. I know these two teams matched up last year, so there's a bit of history too. Matt Coronado is taking it all in during his first playoff run as a pro, and he is excited for it. He also, if you read the article... It's linked, uh, I believe, both on the Calgary Flames' social media pages and the Wranglers. I'm sure some other people have retweeted as well. It's probably in the Reddit. But pretty much Coronado is confident going into this. He's playing absolutely electrically right now. Apparently in practice, he was lights out with speed and skill looking so good. Playing confident right now going into this series. It should be a big one for some of these names that we do expect to see at the NHL level next season. It's really, really exciting and it should be super, super fun to watch this series. So with that said, let's get into tonight's game a little more specifically. Like I said already, it's down at the Dome tonight. There's playoff hockey in Calgary. Let's get the Red Mile going. Where's the Red Lot? Let's get a viewing party outside for the Wranglers. Um, it sounds a lot like the Wranglers are trying to get a lot of fans into the Dome. Michael Backlund, captain of the Flames, has been trying to get people down to support the Wranglers in this postseason. Uh, just because it's super special to have playoff hockey here in Calgary. It's really, really exciting. But... Round two, game one, Wranglers against the Firebirds. That is 7 p.m. tonight down at the Dome. Um, and it should be really, really fun for a bunch of those fans that come and they can get some cowbells. Wranglers, cowbells. All you need is more cowbell, am I right? Wow, that's a really good promotion there. There's a post-game playoff party in the TELUS Club. That should be really good. There is uh, Brandon Lorenzo, who I believe is a country music artist. Personally, not my cup of tea, but... Um, that should be super, super fun for a lot of people. Hopefully, the Wranglers can go out and get a big W here. It would be great to start off on the right note and then right back Sunday as well with another game. The Wranglers could really, really do something big here. They are poised for a push. I know they came seventh in the Pacific this year, but that was with a lot of their best players playing up at the NHL level. Says, so to have a bunch of players with NHL experience now and playing well, Klapka, Schwint, Pelche as well. Wow, it should be very, very exciting. Now let's wrap up this video with the comment of the day. Everyone's favorite part of the video. And this one goes with the community post I made yesterday about, let's say you walk into a restaurant, there are a bunch of Flames alumni there, and each table has a free seat for you. Which one are you taking? There are a bunch of fun options. If you haven't seen that post, definitely check it out. It was super, super fun. Bunch of great comments. But I like this one a lot from 
right? Well, I'm not even going to try that one, but great username. I would love to sit at every table, lol, but Kipper is my hero, so to sit and chat with him and Iggy and Jelena and how we were ripped off and should be the second Stanley Cup winners, but because of BS ref and no challenges like we have today, Calgary would have two cups. Yes, everyone knows it. The Flames should have two cups. Oh, four, it was in. And what I really liked about this was that you said Kipper was your hero. I'm assuming you're probably around the same age as me because there are a lot of people around our age, we'll say, that grew up with Kipper, Iggy being their idols, being their heroes. That was super, super cool to see. Personally, I think I'd also choose that table just to talk about 2004. Super, super cool. Um, I would love to meet literally any of the people in that whole post. But if I had to choose one, it would probably be either Kipper or Jerome Aginla. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you like what you saw here today and make sure you have a wonderful rest of your day.